Hey everybody, let me tell you all about NordVPN. And if you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network and it gives you online privacy and anonymity by creating a private network from a public internet connection. And VPNs mask your IP address so your online actions are virtually untraceable. Most important, VPN services establish secure and encrypted connections to provide greater privacy than even a secured Wi-Fi hotspot. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, if that went over your head, I'm going to tell you right now why you should get and use NordVPN and why I do myself. First off, you get NordVPN and wherever you are around, you can access content from over 59 different countries all over the world by changing your virtual location with just one click. It really is that easy. And that means right now I can watch UK Netflix. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to talk with a British accent, of course. And I'm going to say like, hey, I'm going to watch the Peaky Blinders early because I can do that now. I could yell to Tanya and say that. Or I could say, hey, I'm going to go to the UK Netflix so I can watch the Friends because Friends is still on the UK Netflix. It's awesome. You can end up opening the world to you now. If you don't care about talking like a a Brit, and maybe you're already a Brit, or you're outside the United States, and this is where, this is a game changer. If you're outside of the United States, and you say are mad, because DC promised everybody that that DC Infinite app would be worldwide. Oh my God, well, where is it? Well, it can now be right there in your lap, because if you use NordVPN, you get on You put in the deal one click, you're seemingly living right next door to me in the United States without having to deal with me. And suddenly you're able to use and log in and all that to the DC Infinite app. And that's a game changer. And to test this, I ended up getting my man Luke Hollywood, you know, Mr. Leak Slip Ireland, Luke Hollywood. And he was able to do it. He ended up logging on. I ended up having to walk him through the steps, but not really. And I'm telling you. Luke Hollywood, not tech savvy. Not, I, I call him a lot of names. Tech savvy's not one of them. He was able to do it lickety split and ended up right away, of course, starting to read some Kyle Rayner stuff, but not volume three because that's not available. It never came out. But he was able to, from Ireland, go onto the DC Infinite app. And if you're outside the United States, I think that's a game changer. And if you travel from the United States outside and are kind of mad that you don't get this, you use it for that as well. But also, as an aside, as as a little added deal, if you use NordVPN, it also keeps your personal information and browsing histories away from hackers and people trying to peep in on you. People always trying to peep in on you. It's awesome. So go to NordVPN.com slash WeirdPod or use the code WeirdPod, one word, and you get 73% off of two-year plan plus four bonus months for free pretty awesome it's about the cost of a cup of coffee each month to be able to access all of this stuff but be quick because the offer is for a limited time only and yeah there's also a 30-day money-back guarantee if nordvpn is not for you so there's really no risk and with that there's no reason not to use it not to give it a try i'm telling you give it a try go into the show notes there'll be the address and the code all of that stuff but With all that said and done, let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weird Science DC Comics Secret Origins podcast. Once again, we are back to talk little secret origins, little first appearances and things like that. This one. There's a twist because at the end of last episode, I said that this week we're going to talk about the secret origins of the first Robin, but not Dick Grayson. Oh, my. What did I mean by the what? What's the twist here? Well, it's kind of a twist that you can end up in a everything matters landscape that we have right now. Could be a bit of trivia where you could end up, you know, you know, betting some people on things if you're that sort of person. Because what we're going to be talking about is Detective Comics 226 that came out December of 1955, and in particular, one of the stories in it, which is When Batman Was Robin. Oh my, there's the twist, but we'll see what that all means in a minute. Written by Edmund Hamilton, pencils by Dick Sprang, Inks by Charles Paris and edited by Jack 
Schiff. You start out by looking at the cover, pretty cool cover, where there is a film going. You know, it's it's Bruce Wayne. I mean, he's rich back in the day. You know, he has his own little film room. It's not that impressive, but he's got it. And on the screen, you see Robin swinging around. But Dick Grayson is there and says, but, but that isn't me. And you end up having Batman opening up a box and pulling out a Robin costume and says, no, that looks like you, Robin, but it's actually me when I was your age. And here's my Robin costume to prove it. And we get into the credits page. Now, again, credits pages a lot of times back in the day, you end up having a page with some kind of crazy scene on it, something that may not be in the issue. This one's funny because it is a scrapbook. That it seems as if, and if you go by the cover and progress, it's that then Dick Grayson's like, this don't make sense. I'm going to get the scrapbooks, pulls out the scrapbook and finds pictures of Robin in them. And one of them is Robin jumping on a giant clock that has a father time with a giant hammer about to hit a gong. Now, I say that very particularly because that's in the issue. So what he's doing is grabbing a scrapbook that has a photo. There's no way anybody took this photo, but the photo is of, again, Robin. Whoa, what's going on here? He looks confused still. You know, Dick Grayson, he's a lot of things. Maybe smart is not one of them, but he's like, ah. And you have Batman say, yes, that's when I was Robin. It's almost like he's yelling at him again. That's when I was Robin. And now my past threatens us because the idea that he ended up as a kid, Bruce Wayne, was Robin. This is going to come back and possibly bite him in the butt that his identity has been revealed and they're going to have to give up the crime fighting Batman and Robin is done. But from that, we go to the story where you end up having Batman and Robin coming back from a hard, seemingly day of crime fighting. You end up with the Batmobile that Robin is driving. Batman's kind of yawning. He's real tired. He's like, man. I hope we can get some sleep as Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. I mean, I don't know that that matters, but they want to go to sleep. They finally get back to the cave. They get out of the Batmobile, and Alfred's waiting for him. He's like, you you didn't have to wait for us, Alfred. He's like, oh, no, no. I got a package. It was marked for Bruce Wayne, and it says urgent. So, And it's, it's from a Mr. Harvey Harris. And there's Robin Harvey Harris. Who the heck is that? And you end up having Batman say, someone I knew long ago, a brilliant man, this package sent to Bruce Wayne, if this means what I fear, and he pulls out the Robin outfit. And there's Dick Grayson. Oh, my God, that's a costume like mine. It looks just like it. And then Batman says, yes, but before you were born, it's a delivery to Bruce Wayne can only mean one thing, and we're in big trouble. The one thing is somebody, Harvey Harris, the great detective, which we'll find out, seemingly has figured out the identity of batman which puts all of the whole process there in a lot of jeopardy you know you have the factories about to be closed down here and so to show robin because i don't even think they're what what do you mean and Batman says well i'm gonna have to let you know what this is all about we see that as a kid now this is pre-parents murder parents are still around they're on vacation during this now you can think because Bruce himself back in the day in this issue, a little cuckoo, he's doing some wacky things. So if you were going to try to convince me of a lot of things in this, it wouldn't be hard to swerve all the way. If you wanted to think that Bruce Wayne said my parents were on vacation because that's how he dealt with stuff for the first bunch of years, I could even say maybe. But he says they're on vacation. Their old butler and maid are the only ones watching him. But in the meantime, he is really into this police detective from Gotham. Harvey Harris. Harvey Harris is a great detective. He's fighting for law, for the right. If I could be like him when I grow up, you see him just staring longingly at this headline of Harvey Harris. It says, Harvey Harris nabs Skyway robber. Brilliant sleuthing. So, again, it's a cool deal to to read this because it does give you that, you know, POV look at a young Bruce Wayne really into a detective and wanting to be a detective wants to sleuth, wants to sneak around, wants to dress up like a Robin as we go. And we'll see. But he ends up saying, I got to learn. I want to learn how to be a detective because I hate them wall breakers. And he gets to bring them in. I need to convince him of my detective ability. Now, with that, if you're reading it now, very, very Tim Drake like as a kid, Bruce, he ends up 
being a fanboy of the greatest detective in Gotham and wants to prove that he's good enough to do it. Now, the twist with Tim Drake was to figure out the identity of Batman. In this, it almost becomes, by the end, the idea of trying to keep Harvey Harris' detective from guessing Bruce's identity. So that's a cool little twist. It really does kind of play in with that in that weird way. So what he ends up doing, and it's kind of funny, where he wants to prove it. He wants to prove his sleuthing and detecting. So he ends up finding where Harvey Harris is going around. He's sleuthing. So then Bruce is following him and thinks, if I can follow him this whole time and then jump out and tell him, oh, my God, look, look, Harvey, I tailed you for all this time. I'm such a great sleuth. Can you teach me the ways? Uh, But what he realizes is I can't do it just yet. Because if I do that, he's going to know my identity and he's going to discourage me from it. He says, and this is it. No, I can't let him know who I am. He might think what I'm doing is dangerous and want to discourage me. I'll have to conceal my identity. So he's saying if a little boy jumps out and says, hey, I want to be a detective. He's afraid Harvey. No, no, no. It's dangerous. You can't do that, little boy. But what Bruce thinks in his crazy mind is. If I go back home and stitch up a Robin costume and jump out, because he won't know my identity, he'll let me do it. So the idea is that Bruce thinks that if he looks crazy and jumps out, you know, maybe he thinks Harvey's going to go, eh, this kid's lost a screw. I might as well let him do it. What not? So he goes back. He makes the Robin costume. It's exact. Now, he doesn't name himself Robin. And in fact, Harvey Harris names him Robin, though... There's the big R on the chest of the costume, which then makes no sense. But we'll go with it because it's the exact costume and is pretty much in a retroactive timeline deal would be the first appearance of the Robin costume. But he goes out and he finds Harvey Harris again. Harvey Harris is walking the streets of Gotham and in a Bruce thing that will become more of a thing later in his life, he decides to go up to the rooftops. I'm going to go to the rooftop so I can get the lay of the land. I can see some things. So when he goes up, he sees Harvey Harris. But in the meantime, he sees a bad guy who he thinks Harvey must be tailing. But that guy's tailing Harvey. That guy's going to kill Harvey. Well, it happens that he is on the roof of the Bell Clothing Company. You know, if you're called the Bell Clothing Company, you need a giant bell on your roof. Now, luckily, the giant bell is kind of, you know, light. Maybe it's paper mache. I don't know. But young Bruce, dressed as Robin, grabs the bell and throws it off the roof and it lands on the bad guy that then alerts Harvey, who turns around. Oh, my God, what happened? And it's like, hey, get me out of here, Harris. I know this is the trap. Oh, my God, what's going on? And then Bruce comes out and says, no, 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 it was me. I was the one. I was following you. I was doing this and all that. So Harvey looks at him, must think, well, he's crazy. All right, well, let's see what's going on. And you end up Bruce saying, I want to be a great detective. I want you to teach me. I want to be your pupil. And then in a funny deal, because you have to know what Harris is thinking, Bruce says, later I found out what his first thoughts of me were. And you see the bubble, and it says, just an eager youngster who thinks he'd like to be a detective. But if I turn him down, he'll maybe go off on his own and run risks. I mean, pretty much he'll go off and try to stop crime and die. I'll string him along and find out who he is and then warn his parents. And he's like, you know, Bruce is there. Okay, what are you going to do? And you end up having Harvey Harris say, okay, listen, I'm going to teach you. Now, it's funny because, again, Harvey Harris is not a Batman. Batman is just an eccentric billionaire who decides to fight crime. If he's going to take an award or anything, there is no real structure to stop and whatever. And this is a police officer. (laughs) who's now going to take a crazy dress kid under his wing and teach him the, the ropes while he's actually doing police work. Kind of crazy, but they're made for each other. Now, before we get into the idea that Harvey Harris is going to try to figure out the identity so that he could go to Bruce's parents, he seemingly wants to maybe discourage Bruce right away. But the thing is, is the discouragement is singing Bruce's tune. This is everything Batman. He goes, you'll learn first, detective work is no lighthearted game, but a life of hard work, loneliness, and danger. Those are supposed to be the things there that are going to scare off this young kid. Bruce is giddy. Hard work? All right. Loneliness? (laughs) I love that. What? Danger? These are all the things he loves. And he says, and since 
I'm to be your teacher. You'll learn to obey. And again, if you go with this progression, you go with this really did happen or whatever, it does show you a little bit of that attitude that Batman does have with the Robins and things like that. And anybody with the idea, especially you're going to obey me, whatever I say goes, whatever. Uh, But you end up, they go back to Harvey's house. (laughs) They're just hanging and they're going to start the lessons. Later, Bruce realizes that it's Harvey trying to figure out his secret identity. Uh, starting with, hey, that's a cool costume. You know, you sew that yourself? Uh, it, where'd you buy it? And, you know, he's like, no, 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 I, I did sew it myself. It's something I made and realizes he's trying to figure out if I set a tail or something, whatever. And that's where Harvey even says a little bit earlier, like, oh, man, you know, you got green, red, and yellow. Looks like a Robin. I'm going to call you Robin. So that seems to be where, you know, again, retroactively, that's the origin of the name. Harvey Harris came up with it. And yeah, they're good with it, right? They're going with it. Yeah, Bruce won't tell me. I showed it myself. And then then it continues where he's like, oh, okay, that's cool, whatever. And Bruce realizes he's trying to figure it out. And then, hey, come over to my library here, son. Look, I have all these books. You know that, you know, criminology, it's a science. And there's science books on it. Have you ever read these? And Bruce thinks, oh, man, he's trying to figure out if I borrowed it from the library. So then you could go and pull out the card and see Bruce Wayne. But I didn't read it at the library. He says, no. I didn't, you know, yes, I read them, but I bought them. I ended up buying the books, and yeah, they're pretty cool. I really like them. He's like, okay, well, that's cool. That's that's good enough. By the way, you know, a detective has to, you know, defend themselves. You ever learn how to box? And this is where Bruce almost slips up in his mind, where he's like, oh, yeah, I learned it. And then he was about to say, in the Sea Scouts, I guess, like the Boy Scouts, but they're out at sea. But he's like, yeah, like, but he didn't say it. So he's like, oh, I, I almost slipped. I almost said it. And, you know, they're kind of going back and forth playing this little, you know, game. And the phone rings and Harris oh, answers it. It's HQ. It's it's down there, the Gotham PD. There is word that they have to run to this guy's house, that there are problems. And Bruce is like, oh, thank God I passed the first test. I didn't give up any sort of info. But, man, he's tough. He's really grilling me. I, I got to watch my P's and Q's here. Well, they go off to a man's house, Arthur Mellon, who is a collector of valuable big ship models. This is just, this is the goofy, real goofy parts of this, where this guy, Arthur Mellon, a rich guy in Gotham, he collects rare big ship models. Basically, he's, he's got model ships on the, the river that he lives next to. They're all tied to his dock. And he ended up calling the police and saying, some racketeers came to me and asked me to buy collector's insurance. Now, if you know how the racketeering goes, they come and basically say and mention whatever. Whatever they mention, if you don't buy the insurance, they break it. That's why you need the insurance. The insurance is to keep them from destroying it. So he calls the police. You end up having Harris and Bruce Wayne come there and they're looking. Well, as they go to look at the ships, oh, my God, somebody's untethered them. They're going down the river, and it is a Viking ship, a cruise liner, maybe the love boat, and also a Mississippi River boat. They're all going. I wanted them to stop, and Bruce especially say, listen, I'm like nine years old, and I think this is just silly. I mean, what are you doing, pal? You're rich. Stop doing this. But instead, he reacts without thinking and jumps into the river to grab the Mississippi River boat that he uses as a paddle boat to try to stop the love boat, and the Viking ship. Little does he know that downriver there is a giant waterfall. Now, Harvey Harris knew that and tried to stop Dick, or Dick, actually Bruce, but he couldn't. He ended up having him dive in, and all of it. So he ends up driving in an action movie scene, really. He ends up lowering a rope, and right before Bruce goes over the falls, he ends up grabbing the rope, and he pulls him up. And Bruce is upset. He's like, I could have saved them. I end up grabbing him at the last end. All I got is the stupid plywood. Oh, man, this guy's going to be mad at us. And the guy was. He comes down. Now, this guy is so much shoot the messenger. He comes down. I mean, you think over at Marvel with J. Jonah Jameson blaming Spider-Man for everything is bad. This guy comes down. Bruce launched himself into the river to stop this. Almost died. Going over this huge, pretty much Niagara Falls, and this guy's mad. You didn't stop the ships that were the racket. Like I'm gonna call the paper, and it's gonna be front page news that you stink, that you're the worst, and you didn't stop the racketeers. 
Now, with that, there's a reason well, we'll get all this. That's kind of a PR move at the end. But you end up where, oh, my God, that guy was mad. And Bruce is like, man, that was the worst. But I think I learned a lesson not to just jump into things without checking them out first. So Bruce is learning on the job. But you end up having Harvey think, okay, we got to get to what's going on here. Seemingly. Anybody with a collection of things is going to be targeted by these racketeers. The whole thing is we got to stop these racketeers. So let's go visit some of these people who have collections and see what's going on. Maybe we can stop some things. Maybe we can actually get lucky and run into these racketeers, whatnot. They first go to a Mr. I think it is uh, it is a Mr. Van Marden. He is a guy who is a collector of great glass treasures, like chandeliers and mirrors and cups and plates. These are the things he has. Priceless, they are. And Bruce goes, and hey, you know, the racketeer's collecting all this insurance. Oh, yeah, yeah, those guys came by earlier. I told them to go stuff it on, right? But we think that they're going to be back. We think that they're going to be back to destroy your stuff like they did with Mr. Mellon. So I think that you should get some people to protect it. Oh, yeah, I have a butler and things. We'll we'll set this up. They go to the next guy, Mr. Ballou. He has a clock collection. And same deal. But he says, oh, my God. I mean, you want me to collect my butler is all this dirt. He's not going to be able to stop anybody. I mean, seriously. Uh, So Bruce says, I'll do it. I'll watch the stuff until you can hire a good. And it made me laugh in almost a pun to a clock collector until you can find a good Watchmen. It wasn't supposed to be that, I don't think. Nobody laughed, but I did. I got a giggle. And so there's Bruce. He's got a, you know, technically, hey, I'm going to close the curtains, lock the windows. He locks the doors. Everything seems fine. Harvey Harris comes then, and Mr. Ballou says, Oh my God, your crazily dressed, you know, youngster here, partner, he did a great job. He ended up checking this out. He's looking all around. He looks like he's detecting stuff, and he was going to guard stuff. And that's where You end up having Harvey Harris say, well, sometimes people use a little more subtle method of vandalism than breaking in. Now, why he would know this or whatnot, he's jumping to some conclusions. In fact, at this point, I thought he was the bad guy in setting this up to try to do some craziness with Bruce. But he says, have you shown anyone your collection or have you bought something recently? He had already told Bruce that the guys had come by for the racketeers. I refused, he said. I didn't pay him. What I can only think, because this all seems like it happened in the last you know, day, I can imagine these racketeers, they go in and like, hey, you're going to buy the insurance, are you? And you end up having this guy, well, sir, I will not. I refuse. And, hey, you know, we'll get out of here. You have the racketeers go, put on a fake mustache and come in with a clock. Hey, you want to buy the clock? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Because he says, oh, yeah. Last night I bought this fine clock. It's awesome. I mean, they told me that it has this huge statue of Father Time with a hammer and it hits a gong every day at noon. This is the one that there was the photo at the beginning of the scrapbook that Dick Grayson was looking through. Well, that's when Harvey's like, oh, my God, I think it's rigged. And it's two of 12. But, you know, and now all of a sudden it's 12. And they leap at the clock. You have Bruce grab Father Time, try to stop him from hitting the gong while Harvey Harris grabs the gong, which you now see has tons of dynamite in the back. Very easily exposed, I might add. I don't think that Mr. Ballou is quite the clock collector that he thinks he is. You would think he would have looked at this seemingly when he put it in place here. There's just dynamite behind. He's like, they told me it was a dynamite clock. Well, they end up stopping that, and it's like, oh, man, we foiled that. Okay, and... At this point, Harvey Harris is like, Bruce, you, you know, I'm not Bruce. He doesn't know. Robin, you're pretty good. You know, let's go back to my house again. And we're going to have to warn everybody. It's taking us too long going door to door here. Uh, we're going to get a list of numbers, all the rich people with collections. And I'm going to have you call and alert everybody and see if everybody's okay. So he gives them the list. And Bruce right away sees that Thomas Wayne, that's one of the numbers. He sees that he's going to have to call his house. Now, remember, his mom and dad are on vacation. But he says, what am I going to do? If I call this number, I can't change my voice so the butler doesn't recognize me because Harvey, who's pretending he's going through some files or something, you know he's listening. And 
he's going to hear me change my voice. He's going to know that I did it at that number, all these things going on. So I'm just going to have to go with it. And just if the butler recognizes my voice, I'll have to tell him later that it was a joke, that I was playing a gag on him. So he goes down the numbers. He, he does call Thomas Wayne, that residence of it. And then he goes a couple more and then calls an A.C. Garrett. It's like, like almost at the bottom of the list, but that guy didn't answer. So they're like, oh, my God, he must be in trouble. He must be where the racketeers are. And they jump in the car to go off to the A.C. Garrett's house. Now, with that, Bruce is like, whew got past that one too this guy's tough i mean he's really trying to make me reveal who i am but i'm a little smarter than him i don't think that he's actually you know accounted for the idea that i'm one smart cookie they go off to the stacy garrett's house who's a collector of steam engines he has a bunch of different ones and and they have like he has a little steam engine fire truck there he's got a big giant steam engine train now all these different things that he has well i guess the racketeers came they ended up tying up this Garrett and his family and his staff, everybody's tied up and in the meantime started all the steam engines and it, this is a little tricky the idea that it is dated steam engine stuff, whatever, but they end up sealing up the valves so there is no exhaust to this so these things are going to blow and a steam engine, especially some of the things that you have here, when they are blow, when they blow up, there's going to be shrapnel, all this stuff, I mean the whole house, yard, it's all going to be destroyed So they have to stop it. They run out into the backyard with all the steam engine going. And and things are going bad already. The lawn's on fire, all these things. You have Harvey yell to Bruce, hey, go and put out the lawn with the garden hose. He's doing that. But then Harvey jumps up on the big steam engine train, and it's going to blow. He's trying to loosen up the valve. It's not working. And Bruce ends up yelling, hey, grab this hose. I'll pump more water. You can put out the fire in the locomotive boiler, which then you'll be able to deal with. And yeah, he does. Bruce saves the day by doing that, which Harvey says, you were awesome there. I mean, you really, really saved the day. Thank you. But then says, I figured out who the bad guy is now. And, and Bruce is like, what? Like, how, what do you mean? Was it just Garrett? Because this is the last place. No, no, no. It's actually the first place we went to. And they go back to Mellon's house. Now, with that, you find out why and how and all that, that Harvey Harris figured out that it was this Mr. Mellon. Why didn't he arrest him immediately? Because they didn't really get any more evidence or anything. The evidence that he's going to say he used for this, they had way back. He put a lot of people in danger. He put a lot of, (laughs) including Bruce and himself. But he goes in, and of course, Mellon's there with the racketeers. They're pretty much drinking champagne and laughing and toasting a life of crime as both Bruce and Harvey jump in. Harvey gets like a desk and throws it at these guys, knocks them all over and basically says to Bruce, call the, you know, call HQ, tell the chief to get the boys down here because they're guilty. What you find out. And it's a thing where Harvey's using this to show Bruce that he's not ready because remember, and I said it just so that it would be something if you thought then or not, when you get back to, okay, how did you know? How did you know it was Mellon? Remember the priceless boats, he said. Now, at one point, he actually let, I left. Those priceless boats, they're worth thousands. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's back in the day. But when Bruce came out of the river, when he was saved, he says, oh, my God, the only thing I ended up grabbing because I tried to grab the boats and all I'm left with a handful of plywood. Priceless boats aren't made of plywood. And that was that was it. That was the clue that that wasn't on the up and up, that in fact, what Mr. Mellon was doing was seemingly wanting everybody in Gotham to think his collection was destroyed because he didn't pay the racketeers so that everybody would pay the racketeers. He's the main guy. He's the one who set this up. He's going to get the racketeering money, all that. But it's foiled, foiled by mainly Harvey Harris, but also Bruce. But Harvey says, see, you're not ready. You did great. I mean, you're awesome. Someday you're going to be the greatest detective you're going to be so good but i want you to wait i want you to train i want you to be ready before you make that jump because you could get hurt this is a man's game not a boy's game and so you end up having young bruce say i promise and to show you i mean it i'm going to go home i'll get out of this costume and i'll send it to you so that's how harvey ended up getting the robin custom he seemingly got it sent by bruce he always had this but now Harvey's sending it back to him years, all these years later. 
And Bruce is worried that this is maybe it's a warning. Hey, look, buddy, I know you're Batman. The chick is up and gone. I'm done with you. You know, I'm going to expose you. I'm going to do all this. But Robin says, oh, my God, there's a note. Isn't there always a note? And the note, it actually is pretty cool. The note ends up being a note basically after the death of Harvey. Harvey's dead. And he had made instructions that when he dies, the sealed package is to be delivered to Bruce Wayne. And he ends up saying, it's the last letter from Harvey Harris. It says, Batman, I've left orders for the sealed package your old Robin costume to be sent to you uh, at your Bruce Wayne home after my death. You see, I did learn your identity. You slipped up when you said you had sewed your own costume. There's only one place where a boy learns to sew. And with the sail stitch you use, that's in the Sea Scouts. Now, remember, Bruce almost slipped up that he was in the Sea Scouts and thought that he was real clever that he didn't say it. But it's funny. It's like one of those Harvey already knew. So that's really kind of cool. And then it says, I knew that if you were in the Sea Scouts, you must have had a wealthy family to buy and also a wealthy family to buy such expensive books. So remember the criminology books. Bruce ends up saying, I, I, I bought them. And then he said that narrowed it down to a few suspects. I put the names of those families on the list that I gave you to telephone. Now, if you go back, remember, Bruce was worried. I can't change my voice. What am I going to do? This actually is really, really clever in my mind. This really works out because of a little kid and him not ready, whatever. And he says, I watched you and you dialed one phone number, the Wayne number, without looking at the list. That meant you knew the number already. And that was your own phone number and that you were Bruce Wayne. You were, it, and it makes sense. The idea that he's like, okay, my dad's number's next. And then just goes to dial. Wasn't looking. The others, he's probably like two, three, and he's doing the things. That number he knew. So he just dialed something that you would never think. And especially a little kid, he wouldn't have thought to, to play that deal out. And that's what did it. And then Robin says, and he ends, I realized that if you were aware that I'd learned your identity, You'd always feel insecure. So I never told you. And I was right for you've since become the greatest detective of all. And that's where Batman says, oh, no, he was wrong, Robin. He, the only man who ever solved my identity secret, he was a greater detective than I. And then it ends with Batman smiling, thinking about his old mentor and how he got him at the end. Uh, but it was good. It was fun. I mean, there was a lot of goofy things. Just the idea of that Robin costume having the R, but then called Robin later. It was real goofy. But also, he, I love that Bruce thinks he's not going to let a little boy help him. But if I'm dressed up in this crazy outfit, he would. Yep, he did. And yeah, he got to have a little inkling and an early bit of detecting training, you know, on the job deal point of view of a young Bruce Wayne learning to be a detective but also learning and i i also like the idea if you go with it of him after this saying i'm not ready he's right you know harvey harris is right so i really have to get down to it i really have to learn and might have been a cool thing you know in my head canon of a bruce wayne then that later does seek out the best of the best to learn because he knows that he has to learn everything and that was the lesson he learned as a little kid as robin you know going around Maybe for a day or two with Harvey Harris, the great detective of Gotham. So that is that. But it is really good. The art's cool. Very old school, obviously. It's an old deal. But if you can get your hands on it and read it, it's pretty fun. And also, again, it's a neat thing to say. Hey, do you know who the first Robin was? No, oh, everybody knows that. It's Dick Grayson. No, it wasn't. It was Bruce Wayne. And then you show him, like, gotcha. Now give me that monies. And they're like, I didn't say anything about money. I'm like, give me the racketeering insurance or I'm going to get your toy boats. And like, I really don't know what you're saying, buddy. Get away from me. Don't make eye contact with that dude. But yeah, at the end, it's good. So everybody, I hope that you enjoyed listening to the first Robin Secret Origins. Not so sure what we'll do next week. I got to figure out. Now, with next week, I want to tell you, and we'll be talking about this on the regular weekly review show as well. But next week is an annual week. So all the shows will be on the Patreon. Not this one, though. This one is just its own little thing. It's on the regular feed. So I'll be back on the regular feed with this. We just won't have the weekly show that is every Sunday night. That won't be on there. But if you want to listen to everything and, and a bunch of shows just like this as well with other people even joining me, please go over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash weird science, where you can get a ton of shows like this, plenty more. Uh, and, you know, pretty cool stuff, right? Pretty cool way to put on your pants. But you'll also then get 
to listen to next week's weekly show as well. And I said at the beginning, too, that I have an idea that I might have another show. The idea, I was always afraid. This is a little inside baseball. I was always afraid to put too many shows up on the feed, thinking that the next show ends up bearing the other. But in the Marvel side of things, we end up having two at some point, three shows on the manga podcast that we do that I do with Luke Holly. We have a bunch of shows and they don't seem to bury anything. They seem to actually keep everything going at a brisk pace and keep people involved. And also each show might get some different audience, some different people listening. So I think that I'm going to have another show occasionally. It might not be every Wednesday. It'll be about Wednesday or early Thursday. I don't know that it'll be every week, but it'll pop up. And if you subscribe wherever you listen to this, subscribe, obviously they'll pop up. But just keep checking out the feed and, and see some things and whatnot. And you'll see if this does pop up. But I'm, I'm thinking of I got something in mind that I, I really want to do and be, be fun because like this, I do like to talk about other comics and older comics, especially things that, that I do like. A lot of times it is a crapshoot for the weekly show. I don't know that I'm going to like the latest, you know, issue of wonder woman but i do know that if i go back and pick out something that i like i know i like it unless i'm insane but then you know that's how it goes and i am insane but we'll see how it goes but everybody thanks i hope you keep enjoying the show and all the others and i will talk to you next week 